Penn State, favored by eight and a half. Going to Morgantown, West Virginia, taking the, the country roads all the way down there to Big 12 country. Noon Eastern, it's on Fox. Joel Klatt, one of the best in the business, and Gus Johnson on the call. This fires me up, man. This, this is one of those games to where if it wasn't week one, you'd probably circle and probably would have a lot more volume around it. I think you should still circle it just so we're on the same page. West Virginia, man, they, they feel disrespected. They feel very disrespected. Home dog, you kidding me, at your place? No top 100 players like Neil Brown was talking about. They won five of their last six last year. And it's not like they're hitting the reset button on the roster either. 70% of the production from last year's squad is back. Like, they're ready to roll, baby. They welcome Penn State to their crib this time. Because they, they went to Happy Valley last year. And it was a close game, which we'll talk about more later. But, like, the final score uh, did not reflect how close that game was. They took the L. Promise you they remember that. College football sickos, it's week one, baby. We want y'all subscribed right here to the On3 YouTube channel. Whether you are a Penn State fan, whether you're a West Virginia fan, this is your spot for college football year-round. Analysis, takes, intel, everything that has to do with this beautiful, beautiful sport that you and I both know and love, everything about that sport happens here on this show on the On3 YouTube channel. So make sure you're subscribed so we can all link arms and walk forward through college football season together. Now for Penn State, this is your window year, you know? Like This is the year to where, even when it was a four-team playoff, you had this year circled as the year to where, okay, this is the year we make some noise. Because Drew Aller now has a year of starting experience. Abdul Carter has proven what he is. I think you have one of the best running back rooms in all of college football in Catron Allen and Nick Singleton. They're trying to you know, recreate kind of what they did their freshman year. This is This is the year now. And if it's not this year with the schedule that you have, there's some part of you that, as a Penn State fan, whether it's right or wrong, you're like, okay, well, you know, hey, when's this going to happen if it's not this year? 12-team playoff. Ohio State's the only one that looks like a real, real tough test for us from a roster talent perspective. This is the year if you're Penn State. So my question now as we go into this game, how clunky or, or not clunky is the new OC and DC combo for Penn State? Because – Coach Colton Eke, the new OC for Penn State, I think that he was a great hire. I love what he brings to the table. But it's also your first game in a very difficult, very, very uh, under-the-radar difficult environment to play in in Morgantown. Tom Allen, the new DC for Penn State, tons of ability for them. Tons of ability. I don't think you're, you're ever questioning how much they have on that side of the football, but still, is there some acclimation? Is there some MAs? Is there some issues? MA stands for Mr. Simons, for those of y'all that don't know. What does that look like? Because in a spot like this, your offensive issues, I believe, if you're not totally like solidified and, and good to go going into this game, the issues and the places you don't feel good about as an offense become amplified and more visible on the road. Just the facts. For the defense, those become amplified when you play an experienced offense. And that's exactly what West Virginia has now. Three of their five O-line starters from last year are back. Seven starters overall are back offensively from last year. Mobile quarterback and Garrett Green. If you have any issues, any any weak spots in, in your armor overall, like that is going to be what you look to and say, that's the guy that can expose it. Because if there's any issues defensively, a mobile quarterback will make you pay. Now my question for this game now, like it's no secret, the, the, the talent for Penn State, not to knock West Virginia, is superior. It is. Now, how visible is that? And what's the talent gap overall in the trenches? Because last year, man, Penn State ran for four yards of carry in this game. Four yards of carry. If that's the case again, Penn State's going to roll, and I promise you they'll cover that number if they run for four yards of carry again. If you're West Virginia, you got to bow up up front. You have to. Because we talk so much about the atmosphere that you're working with in this game that's at your back. You want to go ahead and lose that? You want to find a way to turn that volume off? Allow four yards of carry. Allow Nick Singleton to rip off a massive gain to start the first half, first quarter or second half. Like, it's a total buzzkill. Can't allow that to happen if you're West Virginia. And for Penn State now, if you get that going, we talk about their lack of explosivity and what they haven't had over the course of the last season, really, and why you brought a new OC. You can bring those safeties down, and you can allow some more real estate on the back end. Drew Aller, put some respect on his name, man. He'll make you pay. He will, I promise you. He is a more than capable quarterback. 
to propel this offense to where I think they're capable of going. The question I have is, well, what weapons do they have for him to work with? Because Keandre Lambert-Smith hit the portal. He's at Auburn. In this game a season ago, he was good for two touchdowns and over 120 yards, I believe. Like, he was your stick of dynamite. He was why the offense had so much success last year in my mind. Again, he's gone. You have to replenish that production. You want to replenish it? Well, you got to run the football and kind of create some imbalance. Now, we look at last year's game, and you see that final score. Penn State scored 38. I believe uh, West Virginia only had 15. Y'all, it was 14-7 in the third quarter. Like, this was not a game that Penn State had just ran away with in the, in the first half and were just playing the, the second and third stringers. Like, this was a real deal dogfight throughout this game. I'm very concerned about Penn State's explosion opportunities here. Because with it being on the road, again, that adds a whole other element, a whole other variable you have to factor in now. And for Drew Aller now, we saw him play against Ohio State last year in person. That was, I think, the most difficult environment he's ever had to play in. This is going to be, I believe, right on par with that, if not more so. That's not knocking Columbus or the shoe or anything. I'm just saying for this for this squad now and the home opener, with the disrespect they feel like they're getting right now, like th- that's going to, I believe, cause some very real problems. This is one of those games, too, where we did our – our TikTok schedule predictions, right? You do the win-loss, 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 and we had Penn State winning this game. As we look closer at it, and as we have week zero go past us and we see what Georgia Tech and Florida State did to each other and how Georgia Tech won that football game, I keep looking at all the ingredients here for West Virginia. And there's so much there that makes me feel like they have a real good chance to win this game. Again, new coordinators for Penn State. An offense that has some question marks that lost their explosive weapon in this game last year in Penn State. Mobile quarterback for West Virginia and Garrett Green ran for 13 touchdowns last year. Over 700 yards. That's going to be a weapon for them. I'm curious how they treat the defensive front of Penn State. Because Abdul Carter making that, I don't know if transition is the right word, but he's going to be playing a lot more defensive end slash edge position for Penn State this year. I almost like that for West Virginia because at that point, you don't have to block him. You can just read him. And how much they read Abdul Carter could have a very large say into their offensive production and success this season, or this game at least, rather. And I'm sure the the quarterback run game will be a factor in their approach this season as well. I think West Virginia feels very disrespected. I have questions about Penn State. It feels a bit on the nose. But y'all, the way just, just this is this is kind of where we get down to the prediction part of this thing. Like some of this, for right or wrong, is just about gut feeling. And I've had many gut feelings that have been wrong. But if you don't go with your gut, I don't know how you sleep with yourself at night. And so I'm actually going to go ahead and pick West Virginia in an absolute dogfight in a game they will write stories about and sing songs about for years to come wins in walk-off field goal fashion. The Mountaineers win 24-22. This is my week one upset special. We're taking WVU and the fighting Neil Browns, baby, to get it done. And this is one now, again, we're trusting our gut. We're rolling with it. Does it make sense on paper? No. But that's the beautiful part about college football, man. It doesn't always make sense. It doesn't always fit all the little criteria you have for yourself. But when the dust settles on Saturday... You call your shot, they play the game, and weird things happen. So, again, we got WVU winning that football game. The hard count is partnering with prize picks all season long. We did some of this last year. We're up in the ante and doing even more so this year. A big reason why? Because y'all were tremendous in supporting us and supporting prize picks last season. So, thank you for that. For those of y'all that have no idea what I'm talking about, prize picks. Daily fantasy, super simple, and just quite frankly, a blast to play. Very comprehensive. The way that it works, you pick the projections on two or more players, and you pick more or less on that projection, put it together in a lineup, you have a chance to win easy money right away. I shouldn't say easy. You have a chance to win money and have easy withdrawal if you're able to pick the right lineups. We'll be giving you our picks, too, on this show, so make sure you're locked in. Worth noting, too, prize picks right now, essentially giving away a square. I say essentially. Jalen Milrow, his number right now, over at Prize Picks, doing a special, half a passing yard. 
half passing yard. That's going to hit. So go ahead and, and play that as a part of your lineup. Go to prizepicks.com to get started. Use code HARDCOUNT to receive a guaranteed $50 in promo funds when you play $5 in lineups. Again, prizepicks.com, code HARDCOUNT, receive a guaranteed $50 in promo funds once you play $5 in lineups. Again, if you want to fade us on the show, I would encourage you to do that early. Just full transparency. It takes us a second to get rolling. But as we get going over on the socials, at Judy Pakel, Instagram and Twitter, we'll be giving you our plays on a weekly basis, and we'll have a good time. So shouts to Prize Picks, helping us to uh, just absolutely squeeze all of the juice out of every single college football Saturday. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.